and welcome to my walkthrough of the um, Moog Sub 37. Lovely little um, analog monosynth. I guess if you're looking at this, you already know what it is. Um, but just a quick walkthrough. Um, two oscillators, sub oscillator, noise and feedback in. Um, it's got a filter that's got 6, 12, 18, 24 dB res um, slopes. Um, envelope generators, two envelope generators, a filter one and a... Uh, one for the amplifier, two modulation sections, so two LFOs, uh, mod sources from all over, arpeggiator, and quite a complex sequencer as well. So um, it's quite in depth. There's an awful lot to, to look out for such a sort of what appears on the face of it, quite a, a simple synth. Um, lots of knobs, lots of hands on stuff, but also quite a lot of stuff, um, double button pushing and the like for, um, for, the, for the sequencer. So I think what I'll do is I'll look at the. Um, the basic sound functions first, so the, the oscillators, mixer, filter, envelope generators, uh, a modulation section, followed by the arpeggiator and the sequencer, which um, is a little bit more in-depth and probably more difficult to do as a walkthrough, actually, because um, a lot of the functions are double-button pushing and, and stuff like that, and, and it's not clear exactly from the um, from the outlay of the, of, of, of the panel on, on how everything works. Okay, so... Um, Let's look at some of the how do you how do you choose a preset? So it comes with um, 16 banks of 16. So we choose the bank. So bank one, preset one. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So this is one that you've, you'll have heard on the um, on, on on the internet quite a few times. <laughs> I'm not going to go through them all because there's lots, um, but it comes, it's got about, I think it's nine banks full and then um, the rest of it's free for you to sort of play around with. You can see that on this, for example, the modulation section is altering the slope of um, of the filter. One of these is doing that. Let's see which one it is. Modulation one. There you go. Let's make it quicker. So it's really in depth. Uh, there is a, a, an editor that's coming out. It might be out already um, by the time you've watched this. Um, I'm watching this um, sort of December the 30th. I'm making this, sorry, on December the 30th, um, 2015. So they think it's going to be out in January or February. I've had a, a look at the uh, pre-release version and it's brilliant. It really sort of helps with the, the sort of sequencer and arpeggiator modes. Um, but you don't really, you don't really need it. Um, as with any of these things, they're brilliant to have for um, for libraries and editors. Uh, well, libraries really, and just storing uh, storing your own sound. So let's go through. Um, so pick a new sound. So let's go through, the, and then you pick a bank. So let's go to bank two. Press preset one there. That's how you run through. It's got fine tune over here. Um, um, all the sort of main um, functions, global and MIDI, um, editing sort of odd little things in the presets and stuff are all done over here. Um, and the main sound section's over there with the modulation section over here. So let's um, let's start off with a blank patch now. So don't overwrite one of mine. I'll go into there. I know this is an initial preset, but to initialize any preset, you just hold this button here. And that will initialize it. If I just change this. There you go. Um, now initialize again. Oh. <laughs> That's not initialized. That's the panel edit. I haven't held it on for long enough. So when this this is lit, what you see is what you get. So let's hold this um, again. You saw everything change there. So let's do it again. Initialize. Hold it on. And there we go. So. Um, yeah, let's have a look at what the initialized preset is. It's just one oscillator on a sawtooth on um, eight foot. Okay, so let's have a look at the oscillator section. We've got uh, two oscillators. They go from a triangle, continuously, continuously variable, to sawtooth, then to pulse. Then to a much shorter pulse. It doesn't go as far as um, turn the pulse, up, well, so far as to go on silent like some synths do. But it's very much like the Voyager in this uh, in this instance. Um, I think the Voyager um, they can go down to um, a thirty-two foot. If you listen to this on headphones, you probably can't hear this sort of quite subby bass. Um, well, I've got a Voyager on the other side of the room. Let's have a look. 
Yeah, the Voyagers go down to 32, but, you know, you go down an octave on this and you... This is your octave keyboard switch, so... Up it gets brighter and duller as you go back down, so this is sort of zero. So we're in, this is minus one, minus two. Let's do that on a noise you can actually hear. So... So, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. So from a two foot, all the way down to a 16. And minus two. So a lot of range there. Oscillator two is exactly the same as oscillator one. Um, continuously variable from triangle through to the, um, the thin pulse. Again, the same, um, same octaves on there as well. Um, oscillator 2 is slightly more complicated in that it does have um, um, a frequency um, alterate modulation, not modulation, a frequency knob. <laughs> Let's call it a knob for now. So you can change the uh, change the frequency of oscillator 2 compared to oscillator 1 that is. So let's put it on. It goes up and down by plus or minus seven um, semitones. You've got to decide where you are by ear. There's nothing on the screen to tell you what the um, previous values were for each of the um, uh, of of the um, parameters that you're changing. So so everything's by ear, unless you've got the editor, of course. Nice. Um, it's also got this really clever thing called beat frequency. So if you've got two oscillators, I'll, I'll show you how the mixer works in a minute, but basically, so the two oscillators. Let's get down to zero. So let's have, if you, if you detune one, you get that sort of beat in. And on every other synth in the world, the beat in changes as the frequency changes up the keyboard. So this is really nice, it's beat frequency. So let's set this to zero, um, put the beat frequency on. So you can hear that beating in time. But well, we're using this, it changes the, I think it changes the frequency of oscillator two so that the beating stays constant so you can do it sort of in time with, with the music. There you go. Um, try doing something similar with the frequencies. You can hear straight away. It's completely different. And yeah, and the way that works is that it changes the um, the frequency of oscillator two. So, so you can hear that beating. Oscillator one sounds um, is tuned to um, an F here. Oscillator two. So you can hear there's a slight difference in tune in there. If we make it a bit faster, make it more obvious maybe, so. Oscillator one, oscillator two, so you can definitely hear the difference in the, uh, it's almost a semitone there, maybe half a semitone. Um, but if we go up the keyboard, the beating's still at the same pace, but the tuning, is very, very similar. So it's just to get the same beat in, it obviously has to change the frequency of um, oscillator two. Really clever, um, really nice for doing sort of, um, for, for bass, bass sounds in time with um, with the track. Um, so hard sync. Oscillator two on, shall we? Put them the same frequency. So that's your traditional um, sync noise. Keyboard reset, um, this is really nice. It resets the waves um, of each of the oscillators to um, to a start point. So, so we can add, so there well, as as we as we as we press a note as we open the gate, it, wherever the the oscillator is, wherever the wave is, is where it plays. So it's traditional sounding analog synth. Put the keyboard reset and it resets the wave every time we switch the keyboard. So 
and you can hear a real difference there. Um, sort of coming in straight right in phase with each other. And they're sort of um, more washy. Definite and, uh, and pronounced. So that's really good for sort of percussive noises. So you can hear that completely different. Well, I can through these headphones. Um, and then um, another star of the show is the duo mode. So when duo mode, you play two keys. Um, one key will play oscillator one, and the next key, will, the other key will play oscillator two. Um, so if you put it into duo mode, oh, I'll put one of these on for now, and I'll, I'll explain what's going on in a minute. So. So at the minute, um, oscillator two is being is playing the low note, and that's playing the high note. No difference there. Um, so let's change um, oscillator two to a triangle. So the high the high note will be uh, the triangle. Let's change the low note, and now the low note will be playing the triangle. Nice. Um, if you've got duo mode in and no keyboard control, it plays a C. You can probably go in actually in one of the parameters and, um, and change this, but oscillator 2 will always play a C at the minute. Bagpipes. Nice for doing drones and stuff that is. So, um, yeah, that's a quick overview of the oscillator section. Um, obviously, everything, right, um, I've not mentioned this before, everything can be modulated through these sections. So each of these parameters here can be modulated by each of these. So, for example, let's quick, I'll, I'll go to the modulation sections later, but um, LFO2, let's modulate the octave of oscillator 1. Or let's oscillate, uh, let's change that to the wave. There we go. That's just doing it by there, actually. Um, that's an automatic setup, so when I did that, um, it went straight down to do it um, via this. Um, yeah, th here's where you assign modulations to um, various parameters, and by pressing um, destination and turning something, that's what it'll do. You see, it's, it's automatically gone to oscillator one there, because that's a standard thing that you might want to do. Okay, yeah, so everything's um, modulatable by the modulators. Okay, um, so I think that finishes the oscillator section. We've looked at the hard sync, keyboard reset, Keyboard control, duo mode, beat frequency, and frequency. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So next up, we look at the the mixer section. Um, mixer section. Um, we've got oscillator one, sub, oscillator two, noise, and, and feedback or external in. So we've looked at one. We can have two. Set the modulation off. And let's take it off duo mode. There we go. Sort of traditional fat sawtooth synth sound. Let's add the sub. And when you turn these on, um, I think they automatically come on at 50%. And as soon as you go over 50%, it starts to drive the uh, drive the filters. So it does actually get um, a lot louder as you do this, and then you go through the filter and you add your multi-drive and your, um, your feedback in and stuff like this. You have to be careful that it doesn't get too loud. So 
So, um, yeah, only two oscillators, but oscillator and a sub, and you get some really nice, big, fat, juicy... Um, big, analog, sort of uh, mini moog ish sound uh, noises. Um, I suppose, um, you know, Moog have looked at this and thought Oscillator 1, Oscillator 2, and Oscillator 3. Be most people just use a sub or, uh, on the third Oscillator. <laughs> It's nice to have the option to have a, a third oscillator that you can change, I think. Um, but, you know, is what it is. Now, this sub oscillator here, this plays uh, an octave below. Oscillator one. And it's not influenced by oscillator two. Do the same with oscillator one. So that's the sub we're hearing there. Okay, um, noise, I think this is um, digital noise, don't think it's an analog noise generator. Turn them off. Um, and then we also have um, the feedback um, in which is taking the output of the filter and putting it back through. So, <laughs> if you've got anything plugged, I'm laughing because um, I was, when I first got this, I plugged it all in and made sure it's, you know, it's checking everything's working. Thing. This feedback isn't, isn't, isn't working, you know, it's not doing anything. But because you've got something plugged in, it's looking for an external in and it's not doing the feedback loop. So um, I've, I've taken my external input out for the minute. So, um, So you can hear that making a difference there. Um, it really sort of comes into its own as soon as you start adding resonance and stuff to the filter. So without any feedback, you've got nice screechy resonance. completely changes the tone of the sound. <coughs> Excuse me. So that, that's the mixer section. Um, let's, uh, let's move on to the filter. Filter, we have... Um, well, I, I, it, it sounds like a sort of... A, it's got a vintage sound to it, uh, people have said, and I, and I sort of I, I tend to agree. It sounds a lot... It sounds duller than the um, the Voyager. Um, whether it, that's just because it only goes up to twenty kilohertz. Who knows? Let's take that off. Let's have a single oscillator on for now. Resonance now. Lovely, um, lovely, smooth, silky, moogy, gorgeous sound. It has uh, different slopes from 6 dB per octave, which gives it a completely different tone. So it's a lot buzzier, you can hear that. If I go straight back to 24, let's have a listen from a 24 to a 6. So it's got a really, real grit and real some bite to that. Completely different sort of tone and much more wild sounding, I think. Smooth and silky. <laughs> A little bit angry. Um, 12 dB. Let's just go through each of those I want um, without any resonance on. So we've heard the 24. Eighteen, which is um three oh three esque. Twelve. 
12, over high me. And back down to the 6 again. Oops. have a minimum um, 20 hertz cut off a real difference there there's sort of nothing coming through with the 24 dB um, so it's a resonant filter Let's turn the resonance up track on one so that's an organ sort of sound um using the um the filter the old trick of using the filter as a second oscillator Um, <laughs> Moody. Um, add some multi drive. So the multi drive, I think, adds some drive after the filter. I thought it was before, but um, the manual says it's after. Getting much, much louder. I might um, adjust levels um, when I come to sort of um, print this down, only because um, it, if you're listening to this via um, speakers or headphones, don't, you can either you'll hear it, either hear nothing in one section and and get your ears blasted in the next. For example, I'm getting my ears blasted right now. I have to turn that down. Nasty and gritty, and so up to the 24 dB. So back to the sort of classic Moog. Turn the resonance off. And have a listen what the, what the multi drive does. There. We had a little bit of um, feedback. Take those off. Completely and utterly different tone. So these two things uh, in combination just increase the um, the capabilities of the synth massively. I suppose if you're looking at this compared to something like a Prodigy, um, it just completely blows it away. Just, and I love this big, big knob that you get with the with the Moogs because this is the one you play with the most. Let's face it. Nice. Um, pull that off. Metal knob. There was something about the the first few. There was a there was a the metal pot. Um, the first few had plastic pots, and a couple of them had some issues with it, so they changed it apparently. <laughs> I think the Voyager's got a plastic one and that's been going fine for 
I don't know how long 10 years. That's mine, that is. Okay, um, that's enough messing about. Um, let's take that down. So, um, envelope amount and keyboard track, of course. So, if we, you know, keyboard track is keyboard track. So, sit down, turn on. Much, much um, more filtered than the low end. Right to top, duller bottom. Yep. Um, envelope generator amount, sort of. Um, you should know what that means if you're watching this, but if you don't, it takes the envelope generator um, uh, and adds a voltage to the filter section. So it's a bit like, you get that sort of effect, and I shall do that now. So attack zero, decay. So it's like someone just twisting the knob quickly. Or slowly. So I think that brings me neatly on to um, the, the envelope generators. So we have um, filter uh, uh, amplifier section, um, attack decay sustain release, um, standard as you might expect, but we also have on these um, a second row to decay, hold, velocity mount and keyboard track. So once you press this, these things kick in here. We also have um, multi-trig, a reset, sync, loop and latch on. So the as as envelope envelope generators go, they're um, pretty extensive. So um, let's start with the filter because they're you know it's all repeated really with the uh, amplitude envelopes. These pots seem to be calibrated really nicely as well. So there's lots and lots of control over the finer, the, um, over the sort of the the the, the sharp end, as it were, the, the sort of the, the 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 sort of quick release times. So for percussive noises and stuff, you can really tune them. In. Sustain on, bit release. So, what's this multi-trigger? You can hear some play in there, the envelope's staying on. Yeah, on sustain. Put multi-trigger on, when I play the key, it'll re-trigger the envelope. Take it off. So reset, reset's an interesting one. So if we've got, um, it works really well on um, sort of longer sounds, shall we say. So let's do a nice sweep. And here you can hear, as I, as I press the next note, it takes the envelope generator from where it was up to. So as it's rising through the, um, through the filter. That's sort of uh, standard, I'd have thought, um, on most synths. Whereas when they've got reset mode, every time you press the key, it resets the envelope. the next key so if you if you do um i've just done their legato um it doesn't make a difference <laughs> if you got that off back on so it's 
Every time I hit a key, it's going back to the start of the envelope. Sync is really interesting. Now, sync basically turns the envelope generator, uh, sync and loop do, um, turns the envelope generator into um, into another um, LFO, really. Ooh. So now it's syncing in time with the arpeggiator, and it keeps on coming on every time um, the um, every time there's a there's a new note or beat, and you can set in the um, in the in the edit menu. You can set if it's a quarter beat, a half beat, or an eighth beat. Nice uh, loop. It will loop through the um, loop through the envelope, so we can make it quicker. So go in and change that really. Um um, because you get it really, really fast. It's lovely. Um, let's see. Go to preset. Um, clock divide. Is that in? That's in the arpeggio section. So um, going through this is. I don't know if you can see this on the on the screen, but I find it a bit fiddly actually. So you click down and it says back. Then you press cursor. So that's like cursor's almost like the enter key, as it were. So filter envelope generator. Cursor yes. Um, clock divide an eighth. Let's change that. So use this fine tune button to change most things. So let's change that to a half, a half dotted half. Is that a one? Does it change this? effects using that as an LFO. And that's why it wasn't doing it very quickly before it was on loop because I had a really long release off. So the release off sustained out. Doing there, obviously, you can uh, you can alter with the modulation section. So, all manner of fun to be had with the loop and the sync on that. Let's change this clock divide back from a sixteenth because that's a bit crackers. So they still freeze up the two LFOs then to do other things. And you can do the same on the amplitude section. Latch, it will stay on. I'll latch that just to, just to show that it's the same sort of thing. If you, latch, if you latch the amplitude, it just stays on. It's as if it latches. <laughs> um, so that'll stay on. Obviously, that's being affected by the envelope of the uh, of the amplitude. There, so. Take that off. It goes into the release stage. So yeah, so now we move down to this uh, this section here, um, and with the sort of alternate functions of the of the knobs, we've got delay. So um, let's get back to something sort of normal sounding. So we're now 
the attack knob now becomes a delay, so it will wait before the attack phase comes in. Trying to change the um, the release there, but I'm not. I'm changing the keyboard track. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so bear it. You can hear the delay. Set the delay off. That's got a hold section. So it's holding it at the peak before it drops down. So, not hold for too long. Change that delay so we get a nice decay mean. So, you can get really much more complex envelopes than you can from most things. Um, I won't go through and do the whole thing again with the amplitude section because it, it repeats what that does, but obviously with the um, with the amplitude. Um, so, yeah, we've done the oscillators, the mixer, the filter, envelope generators. Um, I suppose as we move over, the, over to the right-hand side, I should point this out because this is great because um, I use this now as, a, as my master keyboard. Uh, any soft synth and stuff are just uh, of... of, 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 my, of, of match to these so that's my filter on everything i've got on the mac which is pretty cool um but when you're doing that you don't want to hear the sub so turn it off just mute it <laughs> really ridiculously handy function um i don't know why more synths don't have that um and obviously a separate volume um control on the headphones out the front which is great as well um so oscillators mixer filter envelope generators Funny little output section. Um, I've, I've breezed over the, the the sort of programming modes that you've got in here and the global uh, global parameters and MIDI parameters, presets and panel. Because to be honest, it's there's, there's an awful lot of stuff in there, uh, and it would be one of the most boring videos anyone had ever watched. Um, that's sort of what the manual's for. <laughs> But hopefully, I'm giving you a good a good idea of how most things work on this. So the next thing to look at is the um, is the modulation section.